Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from Exodus chapter 20 verse 21 and then I'll jump over to the Gospel of John chapter 20 verses 1 through 18. Exodus 20 verse 21, this is what it says. Then the people stood at a distance while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. And then in the Gospel of John chapter 20 verse 1, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter, the other disciple, set out toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did, he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scriptures that he must rise from the dead. Then the other disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher, Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that as she said these things to her. Pray with me. Lord, breathe on us and give us strength enough to hear your voice and experience your presence this day. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Heard a story about a fellow that went to Walmart one day, went to buy some dog food, got all the way back to the aisle before he realized he had forgotten the cart. So he just got a 50-pound bag of dog food, threw it on his shoulder, and walked to the checkout. As he was standing in line at the checkout, the person behind him said, oh, do you own a dog? That's not the punchline of the story. <laughs> the fellow thought he'd have a little bit of fun. And he said, no, I'm on the new Purina diet. 
He said, uh, I lost 45 pounds the first time I was on it, but I went into the hospital. Ah, since then, I've gained a little weight back, so I decided to start it all over again. The man said, 45 pounds? He said, sure. He said, how does it work? He said, well, you just grab a couple of handfuls of the kibble, you put it in your pocket, and in, all day long, anytime you get hungry, you just pop a little kibble in your mouth, and it's very nutritious, and it staves off hunger. The man said, wow, you lost 45 pounds, but you... You said you went into the hospital. It, well, was it because of the diet? He said, oh, no, 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 not at all. He said, I was barking and chasing cars and got hit by one. <laughs> well, that story doesn't quite go where you expect it to, does it? <laughs> it? Story doesn't go where you expect it to at all. And much of life is unexpected. Much of life catches us off guard. And there may be a pandemic that we could use as an illustration there. It's not something we put on our, our calendars, something that you know, we, we, we put into our, our, our phones or scheduled out. Much of life catches us off guard. And much of Scripture, from beginning to end, God shows up where He's least expected. He shows up in the places that, well, people don't put it on their calendar. This morning, I read from Exodus chapter 20. That's where God's giving the Ten Commandments to Moses. And there's something I don't know that I had noticed quite as strongly as I, as, as, as I had before. It says, then Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. That's not where I would have expected to see God, but that's where God was, in the thick darkness. And now at the resurrection... It says, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. That both Moses and Mary Magdalene, it was in the darkness where God was. That even in the darkness, even in the darkness. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. That we, we look for Him. We look for Him even in the darkness. Pastor Leith Anderson told a story about a time when he was a boy growing up outside New York City. He was a big baseball fan, but most of all, he was a Brooklyn Dodgers fan. He loved the Brooklyn Dodgers, and when he was a kid, his father took him to see a World Series game, the Brooklyn Dodgers against the New York Yankees. He said he was uh, disappointed that game because the Dodgers lost. Not a single batter even got to first base. He said that uh, for the longest time that um, he was just disappointed. that the, the World Series game that he got to go to, the Dodgers didn't win. Didn't even get on base. Didn't get to first base. It wasn't until years later that he was telling us a friend, a friend that he referred to as a, as a walking sports almanac about the time that he went to the World Series, and the, the Dodgers didn't even get to, to first base. And that's when his friend said, you mean you were there? <laughs> Leith Anderson said, well, yes. He said, you were at the game where Don Larson for the Yankees was pitching? The first perfect game ever pitched in a World Series? The only perfect game ever pitched in a World In over 100 years of baseball, it's the only perfect game pitched in a World Series and you were there not one person got to bat there were no hits there were no errors and <laughs> that's when Letha Anderson wrote this I wonder how often the same thing happens to us we get so caught up in defeats in our own lives the times that things don't turn out the way we want them to but we're often so blinded by the pain and the disappointment of our defeat that we fail to appreciate the fact that we might be witness to something far greater that God is doing in our lives. Mary went to the tomb. She didn't go to see the risen Christ. She went while it was still dark, while disappointment, while heartache, while sorrow was still there. But she went looking, looking. And that's what it says in verse 11. But she wept, 
she bent over to look into the tomb. A second time, the first time, she, she saw that the stone is rolled away and she went to go tell Peter and the other disciples. They ran to the tomb. They saw and left. But it was Mary who stayed. It was Mary who stayed. It was Mary who looked. And it was Mary who saw. We live in a time, a time where it's not going the way that any of us had planned it. We live in a time where defeats and disappointment, well, it's much like every time. Defeats and disappointment are always there. But even in the darkness, even in the darkness, Jesus is there. Even in the darkness, he comes to meet us. That The Bible tells us that heaven and earth are full of his glory. That you and I have an opportunity to see the, the glory of God. To see the presence of God in the here and now, daily. Don't let the darkness, don't let the sorrow steal your sight. It was just last week, last week, that in our the Young People's Alter Your Life weekend, that over 30 young people made a commitment to Christ for the first time, and over 50 young people made a recommitment of their lives to Christ. Don't let sorrow steal your sight. Look, look, even in the darkness. Look for Him, even in the darkness. The second thing that I want to talk about this morning is listen for him. Even in the darkness. Chuck Swindoll, in his book, Stress Fractures, talks about a time in his life where he had too many commitments in too few days. That he had gotten to that place where he was snapping at his family, snapping at his wife. He said that he was irritated by interruptions and that he was eating most meals just trying to jo choke it down as fast as he could so he could get on to the next thing and then the next thing and the next thing. He said he didn't realize it until his, his young daughter, Colleen, wanted to tell him about something that had happened at school. And so very quickly she said, Daddy, I want to tell you something that happened at school and I'll tell you really fast. And that's when Chuck Swindoll said, well, honey, you don't need to tell me really fast. You can tell me slowly. And then she said something that Chuck Swindoll said he would never forget. She said, Daddy, if I tell you really slowly, can you listen really slowly? Can you listen really slowly? God speaks to those who take time to listen. Peter and John ran to the tomb and ran home to close the door, to lock the door for fear. And it was Mary who lingered to listen. It was Mary who stayed. And God speaks to those who take time to listen. The way that God said is, be still and know that I am God in Psalm 46.10. It takes time to listen. We live in a day where we're called to rush Rush, rush from one headline to the next, from one emergency to the next, to one, from one fire to the next. And always to keep our mind going somewhere and not listen for God. Listen, listen, listen for him even in the darkness. Don't let hurry steal your hearing don't let hurry steal your hearing and the last thing that i want to talk about this morning is call on him call on him even in the darkness we read that while it was still dark mary magdalene went to the tomb mary magdalene knew the power of jesus christ he had cleansed her from seven demons that all the darkness in her life that had ganged up, it was the fear, 
It was the heartache. It was the sin. It was the shame. All of it. Jesus had, had wiped it away. And on the cross, that's what Jesus did for you and for me. He took all the darkness in our lives, all the heartache, all the fear, all the sin, all the shame, all the worry. He took it and he wiped it away. He took it on himself and he nailed it to the cross to take away its power once and for all. 1 Peter 3.18 says, Christ died for sins once for all. The just for the unjust in order that he might bring us to God. That he gave his life not just for Mary with seven demons, but he gave his life for all, for you and for me. To take all those things that would crush us, all those things that would destroy us. He took them and he nailed them to the cross to take away their power. And when he rose on the third day, he rose to live his life through you and through me. That we might call on him. That we might call on his strength in our lives. So often it is in the hard and the difficult times, we call on fear and we remember those things that we're afraid of and that we rehearse it again and again. So often it is in our lives, rather than calling on him, we call on the heartache. We call on the last time that we blew it, the time that we missed the mark. We call on the sin, we call on the shame to practice it and to remember it. And we allow the, the worries, the worries of the world to steal our voice, to call on Jesus and Jesus alone. Today's the day. Today's the day to get back to Jesus and Jesus alone. When I was in seminary, one of my favorite professors was George Morris. He talked about a, growing up in southern Appalachia in a, in a poor community. He and his family were very poor. He also talked a, a lot about his grandfather was an atheist. And they didn't talk a lot about spiritual things in their family. George Morris tells a story about a time when he was 17 years old that his father did the unexpected, that he became friends with the Methodist minister there in town. And if that was unexpected, what his father did at Revival one night was totally unexpected that he knelt there at the altar and he prayed he called out to receive Christ Jesus Christ in his life and when he got up from the altar he came straight toward George Morris and this is what he said he said son I know this is embarrassing to you but I want you to hear me out and take time to listen if you can. I found something here this evening that I've been searching for for over 56 years. And I would rather die tonight than see you make the same mistake that I made. That night, George Morris called to Jesus and received him as his Savior. So often it is. It's the darkness, it's the surprise, it's the fear, it's the sin, it's the shame, it's the worries of the world that call us to, 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 to call out to them. And we lose our voice. We lose our voice to call out to Jesus and Jesus alone. This morning, don't let the worries of the world steal your voice. Call out to Jesus and Jesus alone. This morning, don't let the sorrow steal your sight. It's time to call out to Jesus, to call out to Jesus alone. Don't let the hurry, don't let the, the hurry steal your hearing. It's time to call out to Jesus and to Jesus alone. This morning, we have an opportunity to learn from those young people, those young people who last week made a commitment to Jesus Christ. They called out to him, and we can do that this morning. You can do that this morning. And I want to invite you to do that in prayer right now. Jesus, we live in a world that calls us 
to stay in the darkness, in the, in the worry, to stay in the fear, to stay in the shame, to stay in the, the sin. And we call out to the, the worry and the, the fear and the shame and the sin and there's no healing. There's no health. There's no life in it. Lord, this morning, may we all hear the good news that even in the darkness, you are there. Lord, will you help us? Help us look for you even in the darkness. Will you help us listen for you? Listen for you even in the darkness. And Jesus, most of all, I ask that this morning we call out to you, even in the darkness, that we might know life, that we might receive you, the risen Christ, into our lives and that you, you live your life through us. It's a different kind of life. It's not choked out by the worries of the world. It's a life that has strength. Right now, this day, in the here and now. Lord, we ask that you breathe that life. The life of your spirit. Risen from the dead. That you live that life through us this day. Starting right now. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online, my hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life, and my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.